So remember that we had this running example. So when I showed you the baby's vagina static attack, I was talking about a particular of the curve stated here again, and then I gave you a discrete log problem, namely a base point which has order, well, almost the group order, almost a million and four, uh, one factor of two was missing. And then a multiple of that, which is our discrete log charge. So we have, again, our protagonists P and Q, and then the uh, request is to find A, which is the logarithm of Q with base P. And now let me show you some facts about these points. Now, and I'm going to use that the group order has all these factors. So the order of P has all these factors, I should say. So if I'm taking some multiple, so I'm computing R, which is 53 squared times 89 times P. Well, if P has order this whole product, then what is missing there is this 2. Okay, well, by the definition of order, this point R has order 2. And then for the S point, I'm doing the same, but I'm using Q instead of P. Now, Q is a multiple of P. That's exactly this discrete log equation here. And so if we're taking multiples on both sides, we're taking, well, 53 squared times 89 here, and 53 squared times 89 in front of the P side, then this S is again a multiple of R. Okay, this might not be having order 2, because, well, order 2 is pretty small, so it could have order 1 or order 2. So it can have a factor of 2. This is all. But it's definitely a multiple of R. And if it only has two choices, it's fairly easy, it's trivial to compute what the discrete log is. Because either S equals to R, and then the discrete log is 1, or remember that on this particular Weierstrass curve, the neutral element is the point infinity, so if S doesn't have order 2 but order 1, you would get the point infinity. And that means, well, the discrete log of S infinity base R would be 0. That are the two options, and that's very easy to, to check. So you do the scalar multiplication, and then you test which one it is. Now, these are the two options, um, namely exactly that one, and we would get infinity there. So if now A happens to be even, and A is our discrete log, so we can write A as 2A prime, then what we have in here, well, we're replacing the A by 2A prime, then we can put the 2 into here, and we get exactly this expression as up here. So then we have a times infinity, and well, that's infinity again. But if, e is, uh, if a is odd, so then we can write it as 2a prime plus 1, and we're doing the same substitution again. We're again substituting a for uh, 2a prime plus 1 for a. Well, the beginning part, the multiplication with the 2a, again gives infinity, so I'm skipping that part, and then the rest, well, that's the point R that we computed up here. And that one has order 2, so it's definitely not infinity. So the discrete log that we computed here, this A1, the discrete log of S base R, it is 1 exactly if A is odd, and it's 0 if A is even. So actually this A1 here, that matches the discrete log of, well, the discrete log A, modulo 2. If it's even, you're getting 0 for a1, and if it's odd, you're getting 1. Okay, well, we have found one bit of a discrete log. And I think this was more work in talking than it would have been work, uh, work in computing it. So, two scalar multiplications, and, well, we got these scalars by taking the group order, uh, sorry, the order of p, and just skipping this two. And that gives us a discrete log problem of order two, and that also gives us information about A modulo 2. Well, there are more factors. Let's do this with 53. So we're now taking the same thing and we're skipping one of the factors of 53. So that means that the new R, well, 53 is missing, so the new R has order 53. And the new S is again a multiple of R. And now we can ask, well, what is the discrete log of this new S Base, with the basis of this new R, so in this group of order uh, 53. And so we're computing this, and then we can do a similar case distinction to here, and we'll notice, 
you should think about this for a moment. But we will see that, okay, if it's 53 times a prime plus some number, which is between 0 and 52, then we will get exactly that many times um, r. So when we compute a2, which is the log base r of s, that gives us this number, which is the same as a mod 53, because we got this by taking a mod fi um, a written as 53 times a prime plus this number. Now this was not so trivial. This cost us um, computing discrete logs in a group of order 53, which is worse than a group of order 2, but we also got a lot more information. We got a mod 53, and also we should compare this with what we're actually up against. We want to compute a discrete log problem in a group of 500,002. We have now seen the power draw attack already, so we know that we can run um, in square root of the group order. So something on the scale of square root 53, and then there's some fudge factors. Okay, so this is now a lot of explanation, so let's shrink those two and let's look at the third one. Well, we can do this also with uh, leaving out the 59, uh, 89. And so then we just have those two, we solve the discrete log problem in a group of order 89. That's again even larger than 53, but again it's doable. And so we now have um, three pieces of information on A. And I made a mistake here. This one here, this here, should be a 2 rather than a 53. So we're knowing A mod 2, we're knowing A mod 53, and we're knowing A mod 89. Okay, well, these three numbers, 253 and 89, are co-prime, so we can put them in the Chinese remainder theorem. And the Chinese remainder theorem says, well, if those moduli here are co-prime, then we're getting a unique solution modulo their product. So we're now getting A, the discrete log, modulo 2 times 53 times 89. That's a large chunk of what A is. But it's not all of A, because A is a number modulo the order of P. We're missing a factor of 53. Also, I should highlight that in the costs here, well, I'm putting the cost 1 for the discrete log mod 2, uh, then we have this cost for the subgroup of order 53, subgroup of the cost of 89. I'm totally ignoring the scalar multiplication for getting the R and S, or we're getting three, ti three times two scalar multiplications here as well. And so we are highlighting, we are missing a 53. Now, if you know that your a is this number modulo the group order divided by 53, you only have 53 choices. So we can take this number and then do in the residue class and figure out what's missing. So that's 53 at worst trials and see, well, does this a work? Does this a work? Does this a work? Each time just costs you a scalar multiplication. So the overall cost to get a would be the cost that we have here, plus 53 for the brute force search. And again, as a fine print that says, this is kind of ignoring the scalar multiplications and it's saying that a step in the power row method is as expensive as a search with needs scalar multiplication. So in fact, it's a bit more expensive and there are log base these numbers for the scalar multiplication that should come in as well. What I actually want to highlight though is how this scales with the different factors and how split n is. Also, when you look around, you sometimes find different versions. And while we're still on the way to even defining the poly Hellman attack, which this lecture is about, so let's see, um, are we there yet? Well, we have identified that there's a factor 53 missing. Actually, there was no reason that I just took a single 53. I could have just taken the 53 squared. And I could have done the full, um, full poly, uh, poly row attack in this subgroup of order 53 squared. So I'm taking out those 53s here. Now this P has order 53 squared. This R is a multiple, of, uh, this S is a multiple of R. And if we solve this thing, we're getting a mod 53. Okay, so 
than the 89 we had already. So now we're getting the Chinese remainder theorem for A modulo N, for the, A, for the whole group order with those three numbers. But we're also paying for it. Because, well, this is as much as before, this is as much as before, but this one here is now a much bigger discrete block computation. So what we're seeing here is that the costs that we are getting, okay, so we're again assuming that I'm doing a power row, not for the trivial one because that's just looking at them, but for those two, um, we now have a 53 squared, where we before had a 53 and then E plus 53 there. All right, when you see these numbers, you go like, oh, so 53 squared, square root is 53, so that's like this number, and then there's this one on top of it, so maybe this one is actually larger, so was this a saving? And then you compute this actually with the computer, and you find out that, ah, uh, no, this has actually gotten worse. And no, this is not poly Hellman. You find this one sometimes on the internet, uh, labeled as poly Hellman, that you take prime powers at once. That is not what the poly Hellman attack does. So don't make me sad, angry, upset. Well, don't risk your grade in the exam by thinking that this is poly Hellman. Poly Hellman is what's on the next slide. It's not taking powers of p in one go. So this one is actually slower than the, having the brute force switch over the 53 elements here. Not by much, just a difference of five, but it's still annoying enough. Also, this is going for the optimistic case that we're actually using polyro for these small numbers. For a small number like this, you probably, if you're doing this on a computer, will just do brute force search uh, and not bother with polyro. And then, well, okay, for brute force search, then the competition here, well, this would be 53, this would be 89, there's another 53. So 2 times 53 plus 89 plus 1 is 196. Versus this one would then cost you 53 squared plus 89 plus 1, which is 2899. So this approach where the group order is so large here is far worse than what we had before. Right? Far worse in this case and worse in this case. So what actually does poly Hellman do? poly Hellman starts the same as what we did first. So poly Hellman does actually just remove one of the 53s. So we're first obtaining what A is modulo 53. But then there's one more step which we haven't done yet. Namely, I'm going to use this information that I now have, that I have this A2, to then remove the second 53 but solve a small discrete log problem. And that requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of understanding of what these numbers actually look like. So let's write down another point and let's call that T. Now the T has as its scalars, what I was just talking about, it has as its scalars those factors of 53 removed. But there's another change. There is the Q that we had, and it is minus a2, the one we just computed, p. And then there's a claim that this is a multiple of r. Okay, so let's first substitute um, that q, well that's our discrete log challenge, q is a times p. And then we have a2 times p, so we can move the p outside the parentheses, and then we have this expression here. So we have um, 2 times 80 now, which we had before, we have a minus a2 times p, and now we're looking at a minus a2. And remember from up here that a2 is common to a mod 53. So the difference of it is 0 mod 53. Well, being 0 mod 53 means as an integer it's a multiple of 53. So there's some a prime so that a minus a2 is 53 a prime. And that means, well, we now can actually rewrite our t to have the 53 again. Because we now have an a prime here, and so we recovered the 53. So now this t here, that is of the same shape as the s was up here. So t is the multiple of, s, uh, of r 
of this r up here. So it's a multiple of this point r which has order 53. And okay, that allows us to do another uh, order 53 discrete log attack. And that gets us, which I now call a3, namely the discrete log of t base r. And then when you uh, write this out, well, this is the same situation as we had here with a, but now with a prime. So a3 is common to a prime mod 53. And then last step, promise, um, what we have here is a is equal to 53 a prime plus a2. So we can actually sort things around to getting a mod 53 squared. Well, also on the previous slide, we got a mod 53 squared, but at the expense of solving a discrete log in a group of order 53 squared. Here we're getting it at the expense of solving two discrete logs in a group of order 53. That is better no matter what you use for your discrete log solving. If it's the brute force search, this is 2 times 53, which is 106, compared to 53 squared. And if you do, so 2,500 something, um, or if you're doing this uh, polar row, then you're looking at 2 times square root 53 compared to 53 itself, plus the pi over 2. So a big saving here for getting the a mod 53 squared. The rest is just the same because the 89 and the 2 appear with multiplicity 1. So for 89 we do the same. And now we have our Chinese domain theorem, mod 2, mod 53 squared, that's a novelty, and mod 89. At the cost, which is, well, as I just said, 2 times square root of 53 pi over 2. And when you calculate that number, it is only 31. So that's significantly lower than even the somewhat better version, the one with a brute force search. So this is what Poli Hermann is doing for the running example. And then in the next lecture, I'm going to show you what Poli Hermann is really doing. Thanks.